I'm Jay Jermaine Bay of Othonia Moore's Cranium, Ante Colorado. Uh, the acronym is AMPAC. I'm the Chief Judge of Consular Court. Uh, today is Class 95. Class 95. What do we learn in Class 94? Well, we're taking a real deep dive, right, into uh, the United States of America Constitution uh, as well as the United States International Organizations Constitution, right? Two separate constitutions. Uh, Constitution of 1789 for the Republic. And then we've got the Constitution for the International Organization of 1871, right? Two separate legal personalities. But yet we're taking a look at both, right? Because they've intermingled those two constitutions, right? So we started examining Article 3 because the Moors love to talk about Article 3. And they continue to challenge the magistrates of the United States and their several 50 charter states about Article 3. And the Moors continuously keep asking the magistrates to produce the evidence or the contract, the commercial contract, that says that Moors are under the jurisdiction of the United States or any of their so-called several states, right? And what we learned in Class 94 is not only do the Moors come under the jurisdiction of the United States, right, because of their internal law. Well, what's internal law? Internal law is their constitution, as well as the 14th Amendment that they set forth, right, would put the Moors in a naturalized status. That's their internal law. But what we also found out is that the Sultan signed a treaty called the Treaty of Madrid of 1880, Article 15, that also made it lawful for Moors to still be in a naturalized status, right? And the Moors had an obligation to return to Morocco in order to pledge their allegiance and consent back to a Moroccan government, right? So therefore, the Sultan more or less kind of met the other European states halfway. But well, what do I mean? You see, it's all about self-determination, right? It's about your own human rights. It's Islam, I, self, law, and master. And if that's the case, then all the Moors had an obligation to learn what their nation is all about. Now, unfortunately, back in the day, you know, they, they made sure the Moors couldn't read and write. However, there were quite a few Moors that could read and write, and more such as Stephen Candy on the movie Django, right? They proved in the movie Django there was quite a few slaves that could actually read and write, right? So you have to always understand, Moors, that not only does the United States and their several states have jurisdiction over Moors from an internal law perspective based upon their revised statutes, etc., but also under an international treaty based upon a treaty right of the Treaty of Madrid and the Act of Algeceres and the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, Articles 20 and 21, the United States of America not only have jurisdiction over more because of Article 15, Paragraph 2 of the Treaty of Madrid, but they also have jurisdiction because the Moors have acquiesced. The Moors have not made a proper land claim. We did not go back and get the proper written instrument commonly known as a constitution in order to restore our rights right under that constitution. We the people, right? We the people have to come together on the proper written instrument and, and, and enact a constitution. And until then, we remain as what you call protected people with a protectorate status. Therefore, the Wizard of Oz, uh, with the Wizard of Oz, the Wizard has adopted us, right? The Wizard has adopted us under their laws as Americans. But it's a temporary stay, it's a residency, it's a temporary stay like Dorothy. Dorothy was in the land of Oz temporarily, right? And that's what Morris have to understand. In order to come back home, we have to follow instructions. And what are the instructions? The instructions are the treaties. Everything is about treaties. So if the treaty is supreme law of the land, then why aren't Morris studying treaties? Here's what I learned about studying Morris. I've realized that Morris focuses on what's called literature. Moors don't know the difference between literature and legislation. Moors out here writing books and, and trying to be the best-selling author. Moors out here writing all kinds of documents that are patently frivolous and arbitrary and capricious, commonly known as writs and affidavits. That's just basically literature. It's not based in any law. It's not based in Moroccan law, that's for sure. It's patently frivolous, right? Boy, ab initio. But Moore spent a lot of time studying literature instead of learning how to enact legislation. What type of legislation? Moroccan legislation, right? Because the International Court of Justice informed the Moors in 1952 that in order to enforce your rights against the United States of America, you have to enforce it not only through the Council of Court, but you have to enforce what's called Moroccan law. Well, if you don't have no Moroccan law to enforce, then how can you enforce your rights against 
another foreign state. So the whole time, the Moors should have been learning how to write legislation, Moroccan legislation, not Moorish American legislation. There's no such thing as Moorish Americans in the treaties, right? So we'll keep learning more about that today. But like I said, in class um, 94, we started learning about Resolution 75. Resolution, Resolution 75 is basically uh, an act of genocide, right? Knowingly or unknowingly. Why do I say that? It's because instead of us returning to Morocco, we were becoming more um, embedded into the American society. We were acquiescing through an act of consent with the pen, signing off on their revised statutes, agreeing to their internal municipal law to be Moorish Americans. It's bad enough that the 14th Amendment naturalized us. And then we turned around years later after Nova Draw Lee got assassinated. By the 1933, we were already capitulating and acquiescing to legislation of the several union states. That's an act of genocide. We have to be careful as Moors. We have to understand that Noah Drawley said our own people are dragging us back into slavery. What does he mean by that? You see, he's talking about slave names. Negro, black, colored, African-American, and I hate to say it, Moorish American. Moorish American has the same status as black. Moorish American has the same status as Negro. Why do I say that? Because none of those names are listed in a treaty. So if you're going by those names, then you can't enforce those names in a treaty. And we'll talk about that today. How do you get your rights back? Well, you have to learn how to enforce treaties. Well, the first law that Moore should have learned was contract law. And in contract law, the parties must be known. If you don't know your name in the contract, then you can't enforce said contract. See, the name Moroccan as a nationality is like a key. It gets you access. It's a portal. Everybody has keys. You have keys to get in and out of your house. You have keys to get into your car. The key to get access to treaties was the nationality of Moroccan. That's what it says in the treaties. And the only way we could enforce our rights as Moroccans, the next key was what? The key to our success was enacting a constitution. We needed Moroccan law. And our Moorish American teachers didn't teach us how to write Moroccan law. We were too busy studying literature. But if we're going to tell ourselves we have to study law and history, then what about the law is it that we should have been studying? We should have been learning how to write a constitution. Didn't Noble Draw Lee write a constitution? Yes. Did C.M. Bay write a constitution? Yes. Well, at least them two Moors were trying to enact some form of legislation. Now, it might have fallen short because it wasn't ratified, deposited, and promulgated. There was no full powers involved with it. But at least they were trying. What have the Moors learned from that? We have to understand that if we're going to enforce treaties, then the names must be known. So we have to make a distinction between Mor Moroccan Moors and Moorish Americans. And the reality is there's no such thing as Moorish Americans. So we'll talk about that some more today, all right? So as you already know, ANPAC opens up with the Constitution because this is what you call your writ of freedom. This is a freedom writ right here. If you want to talk about writs and affidavits, this is the one. This is the one. Every state and country on planet Earth has a constitution to represent its people. So why is it that we don't have constitutions to represent us? We're too busy talking about enforce the constitution of the British Moors instead of trying to find a way to enforce the constitution of Moroccan Moors. The constitution is paramount. What does paramount mean? First, primary. It's the most important Moroccan law that we should have been writing. It's called legislation, not literature. This is legislation, not literature. We have to start understanding the difference between the two. We'll talk about that today. Let's go ahead and jump on it. Now, as the Moors know, we're still going over the United Nations Charter of 1945. We're still in Chapter 6. We're going over the Pacific Settlement of Disputes. How do we settle disputes, right? 
We have to do it in a peaceful way, but how do you technically settle disputes? Well, it says right here under Article 33. It says, number one, the parties to any dispute, the continuance of which likely to endanger the maintenance of international peace and security, shall first of all seek a solution by negotiation, inquiry, then mediation, conciliation, arbitration, judicial settlement, right? And we have to set up some type of arrangements in order to try to get to a point where we can negotiate because we're finding solutions, right, based upon inquiry. So AMPAC study session right now is performing an inquiry so that we can determine a solution to the question of nationality. But we must answer the question of nationality with reference points, words and reference points, right? So that's what we're going into, because right now we have to answer the question of nationality regarding Moors, okay? Now, as I said, as we're building up to start learning more about how can Moroccan states come together as a class action lawsuit in order for us to decolonize Morocco, right? Well, the first step is we have to restore each of the territories with a constitution. After that, what do we do? We come together as party on what's called Erga Amis parties, right? Then we have to write what's called a Declaration of Intervention, right? So eventually we're going to get into this right here, which is a Declaration of Intervention that the United States of America wrote on behalf of Ukraine, right? So Ukraine versus Russia in the International Court of Justice case, right? That was about the prevention and punishment of genocide, right? So, but right now, instead of diving into that, first we have to determine how do Moors answer the question, come up with a solution regarding nationality, because if you're not calling people by their proper nationality, then that's an act of genocide, which is, in international law, that's a crime, right? So we have to point these things out, Moors, because we don't realize it, but we actually are performing apartheid on each other. We're performing genocide on each other. Now, don't get me wrong, the colonists play a huge hand in this, too, because they're the ones that's responsible for issuing the, the public school books, et cetera, calling us black, African-American. But the Moorish Americans are the ones running around calling us Moorish Americans. The colonists don't refer to us as Moorish Americans. The colonists technically refer to us as Negro, Blacks, and Colors, or sovereign citizens. However, when you return back to a Moroccan state, and now you're just simply Moroccan. That's your nationality, right? So we got to talk about this Moors in depth, okay? Okay, so in class 94, we were going into that. Class 94, we started breaking down uh, what the Moors love to talk about, which is Article 3, Section 2, Clause 1, right? Which is about judicial power. And what we learned about judicial power, especially looking at Dred Scott, everything was about treaties. At the end of the day, everything is about treaties, Moors. Treaties, treaties, treaties. And to understand how you enforce the authority of treaties. Well, the only way to enforce treaties, what we're learning now, right, by studying international law, we're learning that everything right now is about controversies between two or more states. It's state-on-state -state dispute, right? So we'll learn some more about that. We'll learn more about this Article 3, because the Moors need to still understand more about Article 3, Section 2, Clause 1, because the Moors have been indoctrinated for so many decades, there's no way Moors will understand what I've said in the last couple of days or... Or, or last couple of months about Article 3, Section 2, because the Moors are still kind of cloudy about this, right? So we'll talk about this some more today, all right? What else did we learn? Okay. We started learning about the 14th Amendment. You know, all the Moors already know we've been naturalized, but they didn't understand what's this word amendment about, right? So the amendment of 1868 went back and changed Article 3, Article 3 as I've talked about. What about Article 3 of the Constitution of the United States of America and the United States? Well, it removed the word subject and made everybody citizens. And this is why they keep calling Moors sovereign citizens. They don't call Moors subjects. They don't call them Moors. They just call them sovereign citizens. What does sovereign citizen mean? It means that you fall under the 14th Amendment. That means that you are a citizen of the United States and that the United States of America and several states still have civil and criminal jurisdiction over sovereign citizens. Why? It's because Moors have failed to follow the instructions of the treaties. Moors don't study treaties. Moors study literature. They're too busy writing books. And that's the truth. Okay, what else? So after the 14th Amendment, we learned of 1868, 
what did they do in 1870? Well, in 1870, they put together the Naturalization Act. All this about naturalization, naturalization, naturalization. Taking you from being Moroccan and now turning you into American. So in 1798, as the Moors know, in 1798, what happened in 1798? Where through an act of Congress, they established the Enemy Alien Act, right? Or Alien Enemy Act of 1798 made all the Moors aliens and denizens, right? Aliens and denizens. And then in 1870, between 1868 and 1870, now they've taken the aliens and made them citizens. They made Dred Scott a citizen, right? That way they can utilize their civil and criminal courts against them. So let's go ahead and read a quick summary about the Naturalization Act of 1870, because this is a step-by-step -step we're building up, right? Next we'll talk about the 1880 um, uh, Treaty of Madrid, right? Okay, summary. Naturalization Act of 1870, the summary. The Naturalization Act of 1870 explicitly extended naturalization rights to all aliens of African nativity and to persons of African descent, while denying the right to all other groups of non-whites, particularly Asians. This law promoted integration and equality for African Americans, but maintained racial distinctions that denied naturalization rights and access to citizenship to Asians and other non-white immigrants. All right there. So as you can see, this is what you call color of law. Why do I say that? Because even though it was an act of Congress, 1870, right? They're still using non gear names, misnomers. See, they don't want to refer to Moors as being Moors, and they don't want to say the word subject, and they certainly don't want to say more subject. So they automatically gave us a false title. What did they say? Because they want to give you this narrative right here, that all the Moors are Africans. And guess what? The Moors are guilty of this as well. Moors keep saying that we're Africans. We bought into that misnomer. Right? This is a deflection word. We're not Africans. We're Moroccans in Morocco, period. We're in the land of Morocco. We're in Morocco, not in Africa. So since the colonists started calling us Africans, and all the Moors already know they didn't hardly bring any Africans over here. They did bring some, but not enough to classify millions of Moors, what type of Moors, Moroccan Moors, as Africans. They keep continuously pointing us towards Africa. Every Hollywood movie they come out with, Black Panther, Right? Everything's about Africa. Africa, Africa, Africa. And guess who fell for the okie doke? Moors. We continuously keep putting this in our literature. We keep talking about Africa. And we already know that Africa is not even the real name of the continent. It's named after who? Cypriot Africanus. Right? We know this. A Roman general. But we still keep referring to this, oh, this is the land of Africa. No, it's not. It's Morocco. Let's keep it simple, Moors. We got a curious thing down. The youth are studying us, and they got to understand what is our nationality. We're Moroccans in Morocco. That this is not Africa. We got to stop doing this to ourselves. We have a thousand names. We call the land by a thousand names. We got to stop doing this. We got to simplify this according to what? Law. We're not aliens of Africa, we're just simply Moors. Okay? All right. So, as you can see, the Senate and the House of Representatives got together and enacted the Naturalization Act, right? And under Section 7 of the Naturalization Act, right, Chapter 62, Section 7, okay? Uh, Section 7. And be it further enacted that the naturalization laws are hereby extended to aliens of African nativity and to persons of African descent. Approved on July 14th of 1870. All right, so look what they've done to us. Now, they've naturalized us, right? 1868. Then they turn around and set forth legislation legislation, that Moors don't write legislation, but we study the colonists' legislation all the time, but Moors don't write their own legislation. So section seven, and, and be it further enacted, 
that the naturalization laws are hereby extended to aliens of African nativity and to persons of African descent. How do we end up becoming aliens? Because they're using their pen. As Moors remember in Antipax study session number one, what did I say? How did the Moors lose the land and how do we get it back? Well, we lost it with a pen. How do we get the land back? Well, we get it back with a pen. What type of pen? A competent pen that enacts legislation and not writing books. That must be understood. All right? So let's move on. So after the Naturalization Act of 1870, now the Sultan gets involved, right? Protections in Morocco, right? He says, no, 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 we need to sign a treaty. Why? Because treaty is supreme law of the land. The Sultan wanted to control the narrative of what happens to Moors. He was not going to allow the United States of America or the United States to control the narrative through their internal legislative acts. The Sultan said, no, I'm going to enact a treaty. And I will set forth treaty provisions that give Moors an opportunity to return to Morocco, right? So we learned about that in Article 15, right? That's 1880. But what has happened? What have the Moors done? If the, since the Moors haven't returned to Morocco, what have the Moors done? This is resolution number 75. So instead of the Moors following instructions and clicking their heels three times to come back to Morocco like Dorothy had to come back to Kansas, Dorothy had to get out of Oz and come back to Kansas, right where she left off, right? Remember in the movie, in the beginning of the movie, she got hurled up in some type of tornado or whatever. She found herself at Oz. But at the end of the movie, she clicked her heels and found herself right back where she started, in the middle street. You never left. You just bumped your head. You were unconscious, right? So Resolution 75, instead of the Moors returning to Morocco, the Moors started to capitulate, right, and acquiesce to being what? Okay, come down here. It says... This society has done much to bring about a thorough absorption by these people of those principles which are necessary to make them good American citizens. These Moorish Americans have since been here missed the use of their titles and name annexations that were so familiar at home and which are used in accordance with the doctrines of the, of the religious faith to which they are adherents, therefore be it, Resolved that the House commends the Moorish American Society of Philadelphia for the efficient service it has rendered the nation in bringing about a speedy and thorough Americanization, i.e. naturalization, of these former Moors. What type of former Moors? Former Moroccan Moors. And that in accordance with the foolish right of religious independence guaranteed every citizen we recognize. So they recognize the Moors as being Americans, naturalization. Also, that the right of these people to use the name or fix as Il, Ali, or Bay, or any other prefix or suffix to which they have heretofore been accustomed to use or which they may hereafter acquire the right to use. This is sad. Where do we get this document from? Army Bay Publications, right? Army Bay Publications is pumping this out as an educational platform. We'll talk about that. But wait. This right here is what you call Article 6 of the Constitution of the United States of America. So you got Moors out here capitulating, consenting to legislative acts. All right, let's go back. Resolution 75 was by what? What was the top say? It was a legislative act by the House of Representatives, right? They have a Speaker of the House, right? So they put together a legislative act. But if the Moors had a dispute with the United States of America about nationality, what were they supposed to do? Okay. If you go to the Constitution of the United States of America, we're only using this as a reference point. It's not about the enforcement of the Constitution. I'm trying to show the Moors where we've made our mistakes. This is an ad study session. This is an educational platform. We have to look at our mistakes. We've got to go back and look what we've done wrong in order for us to fix it so we can move forward, okay? So the Constitution of the United States of America of 1789, Article 6, and the Constitution of the United States of 1871, Article 6, as follows. So, Clause 2, right? This Constitution and laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made or which shall be made 
under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme of all other land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby, anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary, notwithstanding. So, why aren't more studying treaties? If treaties, if treaties, if treaties shall be the supreme law of the land, why are we not studying treaties? Guess what? Noah Charlie said, study the Europeans so they can teach you government. What is it that Europeans study all the time? They study treaties. What else? International law. What else? Legislation. They study legislation. They study legislation on how to write competent written documents, right? The proper written documents. So if the treaty is the proper written instrument, proper written document that's supreme, if treaty is supreme law of the land, if treaty is supreme law of the land, then why aren't we studying treaties? We're studying UCCs, we're studying the IRS, we're studying driver's license, everything but the supreme law of the land, which is what? Treaties, treaties made. Right? This is where we're making our mistake. We keep talking about we've enforced the Constitution, but we don't enforce it. Because if we were enforcing it, we would have already been studying what? Treaties. We'll talk about that today. What I have up here on the board is this. Because we're going to break down the understanding, the misunderstanding, misconcepts. Morris honestly think that the United States of America's Constitution is supreme law. Of course the Constitution of the United States of America is a supreme law if you're a citizen of the United States. But more swear up and down, they're not a citizen of the United States. But then turn around and say the Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the land. Don't make no sense. But let's get a perfect understanding. What are our constitutions in comparison to treaties? Up here you see I got three boxes, right? Up here is about treaties. And down here is about constitutions versus two states, right? That's Article 3, Section 2, Clause 1. Two states that have a contentious dispute, right? Two states that have a dispute, right? A controversy. So, right here it says, what's the supreme law of the land in Morocco? It says Moroccan treaties of 1836, 1880, and 1906 under the jurisdiction of the ipso facto compulsory council court orders, judgment, and advisory opinions. That's a supreme law of the land. Right? Let's go back to it. Article 3. Because more, more's got to understand what's happening. Moors have been indoctrinated by their teachers. Okay. Article 3. Section 2, clause 1, about judicial power. What about judicial power? Well, the judicial power is about what? The authority of what? It's about the authority of treaties. That's what Article 3 is about. Why do you use treaty? What about the authority of treaties? Oh, it's anytime you have a controversy or a dispute between who? Moors already know the answer. Moors are highly intelligent people. Just been taught wrong. Okay. So you use the treaties because the treaties of authority anytime you have a con controversy between two or more states. But the Moors were stateless. We were in a protected status. We were adopted by the wizard. And we were living in his house of Oz. We were living in the land of Oz under his jurisdiction, his law. So therefore, we could not use the treaties. The only way to use the treaties, we have to return back to Morocco and then enforce the treaties on them. This is what Article 3, Section 2 is all about. It's about cost of court. So in Article 6 of the Constitution of the United States of America, I'm only using this as a teaching tool, okay? This is not about enforcing the Constitution. This is education to understand if, in fact, you're going to talk about their Constitution, where the heck is your state? This is a state-on-state state dispute. If you're stateless, you can't talk about the Constitution. So if you're going to utilize the Constitution regarding Article 6, right? Article 6, Clause 2. Now you got to understand what's supreme law of the land? Treaties. Okay, how do you enforce treaties? you got to have a state. You can't be stateless, right? So back to this. And this box down here says, increase it. 
What is the imperial law of the land throughout the empire of Morocco? Answer, any provincial Moroccan state constitutions, for example, Ampax constitution, that have been ratified, deposited, and promulgated in accordance with international law. So even our Moroccan states are provincial Moroccan states constitutions, right, are inferior to the treaties. Because treaty is supreme law of land. But then also those for who? Okay. To the right, right? Contentious dispute, right? Controversy with who? Okay. This box says, what is the imperial law of the land throughout the empire of Morocco? Same question. Answer, the Constitution of the United States of America of 1789 and the Constitution of the United States International Organization of 1871. Their constitutions are inferior to what? To the supreme law of the land. That's what's inferior to. Right? So let's read the top. What's the supreme law of the land in Morocco? Answer, Moroccan treaties of 1836, 1880, and 1906 under the jurisdiction of the ipso facto compulsory council court orders, judgments, and advisory opinions. Issued by who? Moroccan states, because the Moroccans sit in council court. Moors are the council court judges. United States of America is inferior, and because they're Americans, they can't sit in council court. Who can sit in council court is the ipso facto compulsory court. It can only be Moroccans, not Moorish Americans. No such thing as Moorish Americans. The treaties say Moroccans, right? So the, the supreme of the land is treaties, but in order, in order to enforce a treaty, you must have a state. And you must become a party to the treaties such as 1836, 1880, and 1906. You've got to become a party to it, right, in accordance to international law. All right? Ask your Moorish teachers about how do you become a party to the treaties, what's called a session. Ask your Moorish American teachers about, okay, how do I see to become a party to the treaties, our Moroccan treaties? Ask them that question. See what the answer is. All right? But going back to... Article 3. Okay, Article 3, Section 2. So now the judicial power is in whose hand? Listen, Moore, you got this is what you gotta catch. The judicial power shall extend to all cases in law and equity arising under this constitution. The laws of the United States and treaties made. So who made treaties? Moroccans. With who? United States. And treaties are the authority over any judi judicial powers in cases. So when more start challenging the magistrate, are you an Article Three judge? Well, it's a rhetorical question. You wouldn't be asking them that question if, in fact, you already had a council court that you knew that you knew you could petition. Dred Scott would have petitioned. Council Court of Morocco, if he knew he was Moroccan and he knew he could petition Council Court, he wouldn't have been asking Judge, Judge Taney nothing. But that goes to show you that your Moorish American teachers are not showing you international law. They're too busy writing books. They're too busy talking about literature and teaching, teaching you about stories. Instead of teaching you about Article 3, what is Article 3 all about? It's about council court. That's it. Who has the authority over civil and criminal jurisdiction? Moroccan law. With Moroccan judges, it's called the proper venue of council court. That's all Article 3 is about. Right? So, Morris, you, you need to understand that. These are controversies between two or more States. But you need a Moroccan state that's been ratified, deposited, and promulgated constitution in order to enforce the treaties. That's the image you should have in your head. All right. Let's keep pointing out problems and solutions, okay? Problems and solutions. I already made publications. Now, I already made publications 
with all due respect, has done an excellent job of trying to reach the masses of people to impress upon them that there's a history about mowers. Our Bay Publications done an excellent job of, of aggregating information, right, and placing it into one centralized location. But at the same time, if Ari Bay Publication is going to be an educational platform, then Ari Bay Publication should be talking about the treaties since treaty supreme law of the land. But Ari Bay Publication does not specialize in talking about the treaties. At the same time, Ari Bay Publications keeps doubling down on the fact that we are Americans, and unfortunately, that is an act of genocide when you try to convince black people that they are Moorish Americans. You're taking black people from a jurisdiction to another jurisdiction that does not exist. Moorish Americans are stateless because that, that title, that status does not exist. So shout out to Ari Bay Publications for years and years and years of information. But now we got to go back and study. No, Drali said study, study, study. You got to go back and study what you've learned already. To see, look at the reflection of self. What have you learned? Or are you still repeating the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result? Okay. So this, if this is an educational platform, we have to start talking about some of the tabs over here, right? So one of them is what? What to study? That's a good question. If you're going to steer more into what to study, and as soon as it opens up, it's not talking about treaties. Treaties supreme on the land, right? It's not talking about treaties. Okay? It's not talking about treaties. As soon as you open it up. However, Noah Jali says, if I could just get you all thinking again, you would save yourself. But here's the problem. Noah Jali might have said this. But what are Moors going to think about if their Moorish American teachers are the ones putting all the information in front of them? Moors have only been studying with their Moorish American teachers right at the stopgap. It's like a stopgap. It just stops right here and it doesn't evolve. And that's what Army Bay Publications is an excellent resource, but it's also a stopgap. Moors won't go above it. At the same time, Army Bay Publication keeps telling more if they're Americans. We've got to talk about that today. So it says right here, get started with comprehending nationality and birthrights. Okay, so if your birthright is Moroccan, then why is it that Army Bay Publications keeps saying to go look up to find out that we are Americans? That's not legislation, is it? That's literature. Once again, another book. But it's not legislation. What's legislation? Let me show you legislation. That's legislation. ANPAC's constitution, as an example, is legislation. It's a legislative act. By who? Legislators. Our House of the Law Aziz with the Matriarchal Council enacted a bill. We put together a constitution, re-ratified it. This is a legislative act. Then we deposited and promulgated in accordance with international law. That's a legislative act and a due process of law. That's what we should be studying, legislation. We should not be studying dictionaries. And we certainly should be telling ourselves that we are Americans. We're not Americans. And that's color of law. That's color of authority. It's fraud. And unfortunately, at some point, Moroccan law of the Moroccan states will say that this is an act of genocide when you're trying to convert native Moors into becoming Americans. Can't be an American. Right? We'll talk about that some more today. Matter of fact, let's talk about it now. Let's go ahead and look at the reference point. We should be talking about treaties. Treaties, supreme law of the land. Let's talk about treaties then. Reference point. Supreme law of the land. Reference point. No. Treaty of Peace and Friendship in Morocco. Signed and sealed by the Moroccan Sultan on October 2nd of 1970, or 1786. 
ratified, deposited, and promulgated by Americans on January 1st of 1787. To all persons to whom these presents shall come or be made known, whereas the United States of America in Congress assembled by their commission bearing date the 12th day of May, 1784, 1784 thought proper to constitute John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson, their ministers, plenipotentiary, giving to them or a majority of them full powers to confer, treat, and negotiate with the ambassador, minister, or commissioner of his majesty, the emperor of Morocco, concerning a treaty of amity and commerce to make and receive propos propositions for such treaty and to conclude and sign the same, transmitting it to the United States in Congress assembled by their final ratification and by one other commission bearing date, the 11th day of March, 1785, 1785. Did further empower the said ministers plenipotentiary or a majority of them by writing under their hands and seals to appoint such agent in the said business as they might think proper with authority under the directions and instructions of the said ministers to commence and prosecute and the said negotiations and conferences for the said treaty provided that the said treaty should be signed by the said ministers. And whereas we um, the said John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, two of the said ministers plenipotentiary, the said Benjamin Franklin being absent by writing under the hand and seal of the said John Adams at London office, uh, uh, October the 5th, 1785, and of the said Thomas Jefferson at Paris, October the 11th of the same year, did appoint Thomas Barclay, agent in the business aforesaid, giving him the powers therein by which the said second commission we were authorized to give, and the said Thomas Barclay, in pursuance thereof, hath arranged articles for a treaty of amity and commerce between the United States of America and His Majesty the Emperor of Morocco, which articles written in the Arabic language confirmed by his said majesty, the emperor of Morocco, and sealed by his royal seal, being translated into the language of the said United States of America, together with the attestations thereto annexed are in the following words, to wit, in the name of Almighty God, this is a treaty of peace and friendship established between us and the United States of America, which is confirmed, and which we have order to be written in this book and sealed with our royal seal at our court of Morocco on the 25th day of the blessed month of Shaban, in the year 1200, 1200, trusting in God it will remain permanent. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so that's the preamble, right? Why is it that Moorish American teachers aren't breaking down the preamble? So it's the Treaty of Peace and Friendship with Morocco, right? So first of all, look what I have in red. Signed and sealed by the Moroccan Sultan, not the American Sultan, on October 2nd, 1786. Then it was ratified, deposited, and promulgated by Americans on January 1st, 1787. So right there and there, we're already talking about two different parties, Moroccans and Americans, right? So right here, are, are Moorish Americans trying to say that the Sultan is American? Are Moorish Americans saying the Sultan was American? Because you keep saying that this is the land of America and all the surrounding islands is America. So are you saying the Sultan is American as well? This is ridiculous. Of course he's not American. He's Moroccan. This is a treaty. Tre treaties are pretty long land. And he signed it with who? Americans. And we're going to talk about that. So where is the United States of America in Congress? So the Americans were in Congress. Americans were in Congress. They had some government going on. Where's the Moors Congress? 
Morris didn't have no 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 governments. Morris Morris are, are stateless. They don't have governments. But they keep running around with these rich and affidavits. We'll talk about that. Listen. Now you come on down. So this is between who? Americans and who? Em em Emperor of Morocco. Morocco. So Moroccans and Americans, two different parties. Listen, scroll on down. Listen to this last paragraph, close to the last. Thomas Barclay, in pursuance thereof, have arranged articles for a treaty of amity and commerce between, between, got to choose between, Treaty Madrid, 1880, Article 15, Paragraph 1 says, Morris have to choose between what? The United States of America's jurisdiction, talking about state, right? And what? The Empire of Morocco. It's right there. Even in the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, these words, between. It's in the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Two different jurisdictions, Americans, Moroccans. Let's take it from the top. Thomas Barclay, in pursuance thereof, have arranged articles for a treaty of amity and commerce between the United States of America and His Majesty the Emperor of Morocco, which articles written in the Arabic language confirmed, confirmed by His said Majesty the Emperor of Morocco. So you're going to sit here and tell me the Emperor of Morocco is lying? Because the Emperor of Morocco confirmed, right? He confirmed. Confirmed. What is it that His Majesty confirmed? He confirmed that who exists? Who exists in the treaty? The United States of America, the Americans. The Americans. He confirmed that they're Americans. The Sultan confirmed. The Sultan confirmed that they are Americans. How is it Morris have the audacity to say, they're not the Americans, we're the real Americans? That's a lie. That's what you call a false statement. That's what we call identity theft. The colonists, i.e. the British, the Irish, the Germans, the Russians, the French, the Spaniards, right? The Portuguese, the Italians, and anybody else comes over and becomes naturalized, all the Americans. That's what the Sultan says. He recognized Americans. It's that easy. Okay, well, who are the Moroccans? Moroccans are what? The Mar Moroccans are the empire of Morocco. That's a vast estate. Th this treaty isn't between Americans and British. It's between Moroccans and Americans. Moors are not Americans. And if you say you're American, that means you've been naturalized in a foreign country, you're supposed to be returning back to where? Morocco. The audacity that Moorish American teachers keep saying that the, that the Americans are not the real Americans, that more are the real Americans. This, this, is, this is egregious. Even, even the Sultan confirmed this. I'm, I'm going to say it again. The Sultan confirmed it. Are the Moorish American teachers saying in Sultan's line? This is a treaty. Treaty is supreme law of the land, not the Moorish American teachers. Treaty is. This is why your Moorish American teachers don't teach you about the breakdown of these treaties. They don't want you to know these things. They're too busy selling tickets. It's Cash App. It's PayPal. It's paying for classes to keep telling you you're American, that way it continues to convolute and confuse people. And you keep coming back for the cure, because guess what? They're keeping you sick. Now I say that respectfully because I know there's a lot of people out there, more specifically Morris, they don't appreciate this conversation. But MPAC study session is an educational platform. We have to point out these misconcepts. Th these, these misconcepts have been festering for decades. 
Moors are going to jail thinking that they are Americans and telling the quote unquote white people that they're not the Americans. They keep telling quote unquote white people, y'all not the Americans, Moors are Americans, Moors are Aboriginal Americans. But the Sultan confirmed that the Americans are of the United States of America and Moors are Moroccans. We'll learn about that. This is too easy. Why don't your Moorish American teachers keep reading this preamble? Well, listen. Down here. He says it again, but watch this. Listen to who's confirming it now. Listen. This is a treaty of peace and friendship established between us. Who's the us? M Morocco and the United States of America. So you got Moroccans, us, and Americans, them. This is too easy. Listen. Which is confirmed? Who confirmed it? Okay. And which we have ordered to be written in the book and sealed with our royal seal at our court of Morocco. So who, who, who sealed it? The Sultan sealed it and confirmed. And guess who confirmed it next? The court, the court of Morocco. Not the court of America. The court of Morocco confirmed along with the Sultan. So now you're going to sit here and tell me the Council Court, Moroccan Council Court, is lying? You said the Council Court said is lying to say that we are Americans? Really? You, you're going to sit here and tell me the Council Court of Morocco <laughs> is lying and that Moors are really Americans and the Americans sitting in the three branches of government of the United States of America shouldn't be sitting there because Moors are the real Americans. Really? That's not what the Council Court of Morocco says. It confirms. Why aren't your Moorish American teachers teaching this? Treaty Supreme Law of the Land. This is sad. Okay, Article 6. I like Article 6 because it, it keeps it germane, right? It goes right into the parties. No. Article 6. If any more shall bring citizens of the United States or their effects to his majesty, the citizens shall immediately be set at liberty and the effects restored. And in like manner, if any more, not a subject of the, these dominions, shall make prize of any of the citizens of America or their effects and bring them into any of the ports of his majesty, they shall be immediately released as they will then be considered as under his majesty's protection. All right, so you got two parties again anymore. Well, who are the Moors? The Moroccans in Morocco. You got another party. Who? Citizens of America. Isn't this, isn't this what's confirmed in the preamble by the Sultan and the Moroccan court? Two parties. But Moors are turn around and say, no, Moors are Americans. And the citizens of Americans, America are not the Americans. Okay, Moorish American teachers, tell me who the heck is the Moroccans then? Can you, Moorish American teachers, go to Article 6 and please point out to me who the heck the Moroccans are then? Because this is a treaty between Moroccans and Americans. Then tell me in Article 6 who the Moroccans are. Can you please point that out to me? Because you're saying the Moors are Americans. And you're saying the colonists are not Americans. You're saying you want to be trading places with them. You're going to say the Moors are the Americans. Okay, then tell me what status is this in the treaty, because this is Moroccans. Are you trying to say this is, we should omit this and, and say that these Moors are Americans? Then that means there's no two parties in the contract. If the Moors are Americans, and, it, and then you turn around and say, you're the Americans of America, then who's the other part of the contract? This is a unilateral contract, no two parties, not a bilateral treaty, it's just Americans. That don't make sense. Ain't no Moroccans. The Moors have been studying this treaty for decades, I don't get it. Look what I have up here on the board, because I'm trying to settle what? This is a Declaration of Intervention class, right? Ampac study session. This is about how to settle the question of nationality. This is a Declaration of Intervention. This is my Declaration of Intervention with reference points. I'm trying to intervene 
to stop this human rights violation. This is crimes against humanity when you tell Moors that they're Americans. It keeps them naturalized. It's an act of genocide. Look. Norwest's Dictionary, 1828, says that we're Americans. So what? It's literature. Versus all these treaties and legislation, etc. Now, let me give you a reminder before I break this down. Already made publications. Already made publications. What to study? What to study? And already made publications says, well, come on down here and where you get started with comprehension and nationality and birthright. Your birthright is what? You say your birthright is American? <laughs> that don't make no sense. Okay, now let's go back. Let's go back. And take a look at this. You gotta understand, no Webster's dictionary with Army Bay publications keeps pumping out to, especially to new students. Black people waking up and realizing they more, they're going straight over Army Bay publications and saying, oh, we're Americans. And not and, and Army Bay publications not sharing these treaties with them and breaking it down. Look at this. I I I listen, I challenge anyone. Any more on planet Earth to bring out any reference point that beats these reference points. You want to keep using Noah Webster's dictionary as your reference point? I challenge any more with these with these reference points right here. And this is just a few. Listen. Noah Webster's dictionary 1828 says we're Americans. So what? It's literature. It means nothing. It's not Moroccan law. That's not legislation. This is legislation. Listen. Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1836, that said that we are Moroccans, right? Article 6. We just finished reading the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. The Sultan confirmed that they are Americans and we are Moroccans. Treaty of Madrid, 1880, talks about subjects of Morocco, but subject of Morocco what? Moroccans. Go look at Article 15, especially look in the footnotes. Okay? Number three, Act of Algiers of 1906 talks about Moorish governments, but what does Moorish mean? Moorish means Moroccan. Talking about Moorish governments, Moroccan governments, Moors, right, are Moroccans. Go look at Article 96, the French version. Okay? Number four, Treaty of Fez 1912 says we're Moroccan subjects according to Article 6. Now, don't get me wrong, Treaty of Fez has been dissolved, but yet we're looking at law and history. You must go back and look at the history. Number five, French protected. Look at January 8, 1913, and you'll see that France and the United States of America refers to us as Moroccan subjects. United States of America and France refers to us as Moroccan subjects in accordance to what? The Treaty of Fairs of 1912 that referred to us as Moroccan subjects, Article 6. This is all legislation right now. Okay, look at, look at the ICJ case, France versus United States of America of 1952, which is about what? Okay, let's click on it real quick. Then we come back. Case concerning rights of nationals of the United States of America in Morocco. This is a world court. The world court's not using Noah Webster's dictionary. The world court is using treaties. And the treaty said the United States of America is in Morocco. The Sultan said the United States of America is in Morocco. The Moroccan court said the United States of America is in Morocco. And then Moorish American teachers turn around and say, no, nah, the Moors are what? Americans. And they're in America. I'll prove it. Listen. I read their publications. I read their publications. You scroll down. Scroll down, it says right here, showing all my kids said, Moors in America. Already made publication. Moors in America, wait a minute. What, what did the International Court of Justice say? It says the United States of America is in Morocco. So how the heck are Moors in America if America's in Morocco? This is miseducation, man, if these Moors Americans continue to push on us. United States of America is in Morocco.
So right here, number six, ICJ case, France versus United States of America, 1952, talks about Moroccan laws. It talks about more subjects. It talks about protégés. It would tell you United States of America still has a limited civil and criminal jurisdiction over Moors that are acquiescing. Right? Number seven. I put this number seven up against any Morris American teacher. Here's number seven. Ratified, deposited, and promulgated Constitution of the Lodian Morris Prairie in Monte, Colorado of 2021. It talks about we are Moors in Morocco. I put that up against any Morris American teacher. As, le as a legislative act, legislation and not literature. Number eight, AMPAC's public inauguration and its elected Moroccan officers. I put our public inauguration up against any Morris American literature. These are legislative acts. This is done by elected officers. Last but not least, No Draw Leaves 101, C31 and 32, that says Moabites are Moroccans. So No Draw Leaves said we're Moroccans. The Moroccan states, right, once you return to Morocco, the Moroccan states said we are Moroccans, right? Our constitution said that we are more than Moroccan. France versus United States of America, the International World Court, the ICJ, said it's all about Moroccan law. Then you go up to the French Protector of January 8, 1913, about Moroccan subjects. Treaty of Fed, 1912, about Moroccan subjects. Act of the of 1906, about Moroccans. Treaty of Madrid, 1880, is about Moroccans. Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1836, is about Moroccans. And then all of a sudden you get up to a literature, literature piece of book. And they use the North Western's Dictionary 1828 to say Moors are American. They doubling down on this. <laughs> this is shameful. Let's go back to it. Moors are not in America. Moors are not Americans. Moors are Moroccans, period. Period. Now look. Look, 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 look what are they publication. This is where the confusion comes in. Right, so one minute, at the top they saying, oh, we, we are, you should find out that you are American. Then you come down and you see all Mac heads, and you're alluding to the fact that the all Mac heads are Americans, right? Then you come down here and you quote Noble to Ali, and you say, what is the modern name of the Moabites? Says Moroccans. Where is the Moroccan Empire? Says Northwest of Mexico. Is the Moroccan Empire. So you got Moroccans in the empire of Morocco. Isn't that what the Sultan and the court of Morocco said? Mm -hmm. But then you turn around and you confuse the Moors. You come down here in the same, keep pushing, and you say Moors in America. But I thought the Moors was in Morocco. I thought the Moors was Moroccan. And all of a sudden you say Moors are Americans. And you continue to see this trend all the way through this website, right? All the way through it. You, you just scroll down and scroll down and you just keep finding, it keeps repeating that Moors are Americans, right? Just keeps repeating. If you keep on reading, and, and like I said, Artie Made Publication is an excellent website for information, right? You can learn a lot, okay? You can learn a lot about our history, but you can't keep saying that we're Americans. That's, that's a false statement. Okay, now here's, here's the egregious part. Already made publications is selling identification cards. <laughs> it says national identification card. How are you a national and you're still stateless? Mm -hmm. Only a Moroccan state can recognize you as being a Moroccan national. You just can't arbitrarily print off a card and say you're a national of some different jurisdiction while you're still a, in an adopted, protected subject in the jurisdiction of the United States of America? You the old Dorothy. Dorothy can't run off and start printing identification cards while she's in the land of Oz. But look at this. It says what? This, this is egregious. Look, a lodeo American national. You're trying to say a lodeo means what? There's no higher classification in law than a lodeo. Right? Then you say you're a lodeo American? No all these said we're Moroccan. The treaty said we're Moroccan. The ICJ says we're Moroccan. 
then you turn around and selling nationality cards and say we're loaded with Americans. That's an act of genocide. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it like it is, knowingly or unknowingly. This has to stop. This has to stop. These, these sovereign citizen processes have to stop, okay? Now look, underneath the card, look. Look what it says underneath the card. American. Now, an aboriginal of one of the various copper-colored natives found on the American continent by the Europeans. Now, the original application of the name, right? Now, you notice they took out the word apply. And the real definition says, the definition of American, America was applied to us, but they removed it out the definition. That's not the definition. Mm. You see how they took the word out, apply? You see? Yep. But look how they're doubling down on it's American, right? So you're American. You got an identification that says you're the Aboriginal American. It ain't no such thing as Aboriginal Americans. Why? Let me show you why. Let me show you why. Look what the World Court said. The United States of America, America is in Morocco. So Americans are in Morocco. Morocco is not in America. So how can America claim to be Aboriginal? Aboriginal? What's Aboriginal? Morocco for Moroccans. Isn't that simple? Okay. How do we get here? How do we find ourselves here? Moorish American teachers. That's how we find And everybody's in fellowship instead of scholarship. What should we have been in scholarship of? Right. Treaties, right? We, we should have been in scholarship of treaties. We should have been in scholarship of treaties and at the very least listen to Noah Drali when he says simply that we are Moroccans. Why the heck we turn into Americans as even Noah Drali and all his literature said that we are Moroccans. Look at all this Moroccan, 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 all here, America. You go back to Army Bay Publications, America. You come underneath it, they define America. Oh, you Aboriginal. You see that? You Aboriginal. Who's Aboriginal? You said America's Aboriginal? Okay, so what you're telling me is, what you're telling me is the Sultan and the courts are lying. This treaty of peace and friendship of 1787 established between us, Moroccans, and the United States of America, the Americas, which is confirmed as the two different parties in which we have ordered to be written in the book and sealed with our royal seal X, our court of Morocco. That's a legislative act. That's a treaty. A treaty more supreme than your Moorish American teachers. Now, what is it you're supposed to do with this nationality card? What, what do Moors do? What's the next step? After you spend money on this nationality card that's patently frivolous and arbitrary and capricious because it has no judicial power whatsoever because it wasn't issued by a state. It was issued by a third-party interloper issuing cards as if they have the right to issue national identification. Dorothy can't print her own identification. Here's what's happening. Once you get the nationality card, now all of a sudden you say, download this document. Man, I remember the first time I saw this document, I was so happy. I was like, man, I'm well on my way. I'm on a yellow brick road. Nah, I was pretty much on a conveyor belt straight to jail and e eviction. Because look at the Moorish American teachers. They're going to jail. And their students going to jail. So this document right here is not a get out of jail free card. It is a card to send you to jail. Look at this. First of all, let's look at these flags. You can't say you represent this flag. You're not a citizen or a national of the Empire of Morocco. The Empire of Morocco is void of the central government. Why do you keep putting the Moroccan flag on there all by itself? Then you turn around and put this flag. Why do you keep put, putting that flag on there? Oh, you're talking about the two parties, right? But yet you say you're the American. So you're the American, and this is American? Oh, you say you're Moroccan, and you say they're not the real Americans, but Moroccans are American. I'm confused. 
This don't make no sense. But yet you show an American flag, Moroccan flag, showing two different parties, but you turn around and keep saying that you are the real American. It don't make no sense. Okay, check it out. Now, we're not going to read all this. Hey, no. Let's start from the top. Mm, the Moorish Divine and National Movement of the World. Legal Notice. Name, declaration, correction, proclamation, and publication. I, Suleiman Bey, being duly affirmed, standing squarely, declare and proclaim upon divine law, nature's law, universal law, Morris birthrights, international law, and constitutional law, declare and say, I, being previously identified by the Union States Society of North America, the USA, under the colorable wardship name of John Doe Nam de Geer goes there, does hereby refute the fraud, make public and publish my corrected national name, declare and affirm my true proper person status, and reclaim my rightful social and cultural life of the state in accord with my Moorish nation of Northwest of Mexico, North America, acknowledging birthrights having lawful and legally obtained and proclaimed my Moorish nationality and birthright. The name and the title in harmony with, in association with, in, and in accord with divine law. The customs and the laws, rules, and usages of the Moorish divine and national movement. Being aboriginal and indigenous and bound to the North American continent by heritage. Pause. Let me get this right. You're saying this is a legal document that, by the way, is getting Moors locked up to change your name. Now, everybody knows that when you want to change your name, you got to go see who? Judge. A judge. So let me ask you a question, Moorish American teachers. What judge did you take this document to that's a Moroccan judge under Article 3? What Article 3 am I talking about? Okay, check it out. What Article 3 am I talking about? Here's ANPAC's Constitution as an example. This is a Moroccan Constitution of a Moroccan state that's been ratified, deposited, and promulgated in accordance with international law with this Constitution. For we the Moors in Morocco, we're not Americans, we're in Morocco, which makes us Moroccan. But wait a minute. Let's go on down to Article 3. Article 3. Article 3. Article 3 of our Constitution of ANPAC as an example. Article 3, Kazi, means judge. Herein shall be covered by the judicial branch. Wait a minute. Article 3, that sounds so familiar. Article 3 sounds so familiar. Article 3 of the Constitution of the United States of America and the United States, Morris keep talking about Article 3, Section 2, talking about judicial power, right? So your judicial power is under the authority, under the authority of treaties. And who gets to oversee treaties regarding what? Judicial power? Who gets to see judicial power? Okay. As an example, all the Moroccan states, they have an Article Three judge overseeing the judicial branch of council court. That's Article Three. That's how you enforce your laws. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to RBA Publications document. Legal notice, okay. So you say you're doing a name change. What Article 3 Moroccan judge signed off on you to change your name? Crickets. It don't exist, which makes this patently frivolous and arbitrary and capricious, especially when you say you're getting your rights from a state. Can you tell me the name of the judge of the Moorish American state, the competent judge that was sworn in by the competent authority of the state. Can you tell me the name of the wazir, prime minister, president of Morocco that you say you went to, you, you met with a judge to change your name because that judge was, a, was elected by the nationals. The judge was elected by the nationals. The wazir and the legislative branch confirmed that judge. And that judge now has the power to help you to change your name. Can you tell me the name of the state? And can you have that judge to contact me? Because I'm the competent authority of AMPAC. I would love to meet these judges that are signing off on these documents that claim to be a part of their state. Can you please make an introduction? Now listen. And it says right here, in accordance, 
In accordance. Oh, you changing your name in accordance to what? Let's see what it said. In accordance to what? This is AMPAC study session. We got to tell these truth more. Sometimes the truth is messy, but we got to talk about it, right? So it says right here, in, a, in accord with my Moorish nation of Northwest of Mexico, North America, right? So you're saying your state is of Northwest of Mexico. Northwest of Mexico is what? According to Novdralee, no Empire of Morocco. Then you turn around and say and mix it with North America. You combine in these two. You're intermixing this. It's a hybrid. Stop doing this. Take the word America out of the documents. You're supposed to be converting to a Moroccan law. Why do you keep talking about America? Now look down here. It says you get all these rights because you're what? Bound to the North America continent by heritage. You're bound to the North American continent by heritage. You're bound to North America? How are you bound to North America when you're supposed to be getting out of America and returning to Morocco? And you say your heritage is based in America? Your heritage is not. Your heritage is not in America because America is where? Where is America? Where is America? The United States of America is in Morocco according to the International Court of Justice and according to treaties. We got to talk about this more. We got to tell these truths. This don't make no sense. Now, down here, because I'm not going to make Moors read all this. Moors already know about this document. And it still continues to go and says, conjoined to my Moorish American, right? They're conjoining status. They're talking status. I know you can't see that. Let me increase it. Let me increase it. And this document says, it's talking about what? Status. It's talking about status. Status. It conjoined to my Moorish American <laughs> consent, consanguine pedigree and national honor. So your, your consanguine pedigree and national honor is being what? Moorish American? Mm -hmm. You're not a Moorish American. You don't even realize Moorish means Moroccan. American means American, but there's Americans on that side of the contract, Moroccans on this side of the contract, and you combine the two and created a hybrid. And trying to enforce this upon the civilized society of people who actually study trees. This, this, is, this is egregious. And saying that Moorish American is what? It's consanguine pedigree. <laughs> That's shameful. Now look down here, look at their reference points. We're gonna break this down. They saying the legal notice is based in what? The free Moorish American Zodiac Constitution. Oh wait. So you said the Moors have a Zodiac Constitution? The Moors have a constitution of the Empire of Morocco. Okay, we're gonna come back to that. So the Zodiac Constitution and birthrights of Moorish Americans. Well wait, how can you have a constitution of Moorish Americans if there's no such thing as Moorish Americans in the treaties? Now here, number two, United States Republic, Department of Justice. Listen, now remember now, in class 94, I went over this. Listen, number two, United States Republic, Department of Justice, Morse American Credentials, AA-222-141, Truth A1. Wait a minute. Wait, hold up. So, <laughs> under number two, I already made publication is telling more your credentials is this on AA222141. Now, I could have sworn that AA222141, according to class impact study session, class 94 talks about what? Title 22, chapter 2, sections 141 to 143 is about what? How the United States of America still has civil and criminal jurisdiction over Moors according to what? Treaties. AA222141, that RB Bay publication said that's your credentials. No, that's more like an a inmate ID. <laughs> uh, this is an inmate ID, y'all don't realize it. <laughs> this is listed under Public Law 856 of August 1st, 1956, talks about 
Title 22, Chapter 2, Section 141 of Public Law 856 of August 1st, 1956. How, how is it codified? It's codified under 8 Stat 484 34 Stat 2905. Right? I think I got it pulled up. Just a moment. Okay. Public Law 856. Public Law 856. It's about what? United States Code 22 USC 141 and 143, commonly known as Title 22, Chapter 2, Sections 141 to 143, and codified under 8 Stat 484, 34 Stat 2905, and commonly known as AA 222-141. It's all about what? Let's read it again. Mm -hmm. It says, Whereas the laws of the United States invest in minister and consuls of the United States in certain countries, including Morocco, with judicial authority so far as the exercise of the same is allowed by treaty with such countries and in accordance with usage in such countries and... Pause. So, the United States of America, under AA 222-141, has judicial authority so far as the exercise of the same is allowed by treaty. Judicial authority means what? Civil and criminal courts under AA 222-141. Next paragraph. Whereas the consuls of the United States and Morocco are permitted to exercise jurisdiction over Americans, nationals, American nationals under the treaty between the United States and Morocco, signed September 16th of 1836, and the Act of Algeciras signed April 7th of 1906, and the exercise by custom and usage the same jurisdiction over subjects of Morocco or others who may be designated as protégés under the Convention of Madrid, signed of July 3rd of 1880. All right, so AA 222-141 is an inmate identification number because whereas the consuls of the United States in Morocco are permitted to exercise jurisdiction over Moorish Americans, anyone who thinks they're Americans, United States of America got jurisdiction over American nationals under the treaty between, there's the word between again, between the United States and Morocco. And they got these powers exercised by what? Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1836, Treaty of Act of Outer Series of April 7th, and according to the Treaty of Madrid, July 3rd, 1880. It's right there. The Moors keep telling themselves they're Americans. Well, Americans have jurisdiction over Americans. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. So, on Arriba Publications, Arriba Publications, under this so-called legal document, legal notice, your legal notice is, is promoting AA 222-141 and got the nerve to say it is true. <laughs> A1. Well, it's A1, all right. It's going to be sale, sale number A1, right there. <laughs> so then it comes down, look at section four. United States, saying you get this authority from who? United States Constitution, Article 3, Section 2. <laughs> you, so Moore's is still claiming the Constitution of the United States of America under Article 3, Section Article 3, Section 2. It still don't understand what it means. Only Council of Court can make these orders for you. Only Council of Court can enforce this. Now look down here. This, this is probably the worst. I don't know. This is running a close second between... AA 222141, right, which is a subjugation number. But look at this number five. Resolution number 75, dated April 17, 1933, from the Marsh American Society. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? Let's go on back to it. Resolution 75. Resolution 75 mm -hmm. is a subjugation documentation, legislative act that Moorish Americans agreed to. That way, Moorish Americans become what? Speedy and thorough American, Americanization, naturalization of these former Moors. And this is an Artie Bay Publications document. We're looking at it. Everybody knows these red borders. That's their signature, right? And you come over here, and they're promoting Resolution 75. This is where you, they said, this is where your remedy comes from. No, it isn't. This is subjugation. This is genocide act, right? Resolution 75 of the genocide act. 
And clearly, Moors don't understand legislation because you're too busy looking at literature. You don't understand Article 3 of the Constitution of the United States of America, Section 2. Is that you're supposed to be petitioning council court of a Moroccan state. But if you don't have no Moroccan state, how are you going to petition council court? Because that judge don't exist if you don't have a Moroccan state. And then, like I said, this credential, AA222141, Army Bay Publications is pumping that out. But check this out. No disrespect to see him back. But the Moorish Americans have taken C.M. Bay's constitution, in which his constitution was not a legislative act. C.M. Bay's constitution is literature. It's an explanation of the Zodiac. It has no three branches of government. His constitution was not enacted by legislation. It was not ratified, deposited, and promulgated in accordance to international law. Keeping in mind, supposedly this was deposited in 1949. When did the United Nations Charter come out? 1945. The instructions are in the United Nations Charter. If, in fact, you want to draft a constitution, which is a legislative act, you got to deposit the United Nations in accordance to Article 102 of the Charter. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. Everybody knows that the Zodiac Constitution was deposited where? Or should I say, given notice and put on the record with the Library of Congress. Listen. We got to do this more. We, tell the truth is sometimes messy, right? This is not easy for me. But if I don't point these truths out, who will? But we got to do it in a competent way. We got to have... We, 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 if we point out problems, we got to point out solutions, right? Now, here's what I want you to keep in mind before we start reading the Zodiac Constitution. Here's one of the first things. Look at what's on it. AA222141. That's an inmate number. Because that's code for the United States of America to have jurisdiction over any more using that number. But here's what I want you to keep in mind as we start to read this. And this is no disrespect to CM Bay, because CM Bay is no longer with us, so we're all here left to try to use discernment to see what the heck happened, because CM Bay is not here to defend himself about this. Okay? But what you're going to learn about this Zodiac Constitution, which is private law, it's not public law, it's private law. That it, it does not mention anything about three branches of government. It, it, there's no mention about three branches of government. Look at Ukraine. Because we talk about Ukraine, right? Genocide Ukraine. Ukraine Constitution, 1996. Right? You go down to Article 6. You go down to Article 6. Article 6. Talks about what? Article 6. State power in Ukraine is exercised on the principles of its division into legislative, executive, and judicial power. That's three branches of government. That's Dorothy clicking her heels three times. It also says, uh, clause 2. Bodies of legislative, executive, and judicial power exercise their authority within the limits established by the Constitution and in accordance with the laws of Ukraine. Laws of Ukraine. It's about three branches of government. Right? Mm -hmm. We learned about this. Okay? Look at Russia's constitution of 1993. What about Russia? Okay, you go down to Article 10. I'm trying to show the Moors. There's a point I'm making here. There's a common denominator constitutions. And the common denominator is what? Three branches of government. Article 10. The state power in the Russian Federation shall be exercised on the basis of this division into legislative, executive, and judicial power. The bodies of legislative, executive, and judicial power shall be independent. Three branches of government. That's Dorothy clicking her heels three times, right? You come over to Adpac's Constitution as an example. We got three branches of government, right? We got Article 3, judicial branch, right? Three branches of government. Then you come up, and now you go to Article 2. Article 2, Article 2 is the legislative branch, right? That's the legislative branch, okay? Legislative branch. Then you go up to Article 1. Article 1 is the YZR Res, okay? I'll, zero, I'll 
Why zero outrage is the executive branch, okay? Three branches of government in our Moroccan constitutions. Okay, now you come back over here to Zodiac. Moore's already know in advance who's read this, there's no three branches of government. And it wasn't ratified in positive and promulgated. But yet Moore's are using it as a means of defense in a courtroom or wherever saying, Moore's got a constitution. But that's not true. This is not a public constitution, it's a private constitution. And the worst part is this, the Zodiac Constitution makes a claim to the world. It literally says it's a universal, I believe I can pull it up, this is a universal constitution, right? Universal, I forgot which article it is, but it literally says it's a universal constitution. I, I'm not even going to take the time to read it, it would take us too long, it's about uh, 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 8, 12 pages, but it says it's a universal constitution, all right? And it has no three branches of government, no legislators, no prime minister, Matter of fact, it doesn't even have a date. There's no signature on it. It wasn't ratified with no signature. There's no date on it. And when you start reading it, what you'll find out, it starts reading like someone's just rambling and talking and literally asking questions, right? You start reading it, and, and there's question marks in it, right? There's literally question marks in here. I'm trying to find one of them. I, I don't see it immediately, but... All the Moors have read this already, right? What, what is my point? Because I can point out problems. What's the solution? The reality is, this is not a constitution. This is not a constitution. Look at that. Section 3, look at this. A constitution has got a question mark in it? <laughs> Man, this is, this is shameful. A constitution got a question mark in it? And it, that's not the only one. That's, that's Section 3, right? That's section three, right? And there's another one. Another question mark in a constitution? Really? Come on, come on, Moore. We, we can do better than this. This, this, is, this. this don't have nothing to do with CM Bay. This is the Moorish American teachers that keeps pushing this on us because they say that our rights come from these fake identification cards. Right? And then our rights come from a constitution that does not exist in international law. There's no constitution for Moors of international law regarding the Zodiac Constitution. That's just the truth. We got to tell the truth, Moors. The truth is messy sometimes. Especially when you say the constitution birthright of Moorish Americans. Our birthright is Moorish Americans. This is egregious. Let's go on to this next document. What am I trying to say? Listen to me, especially young Moors, young Moors out there. Don't use this. You're going to go to jail. Army Day Publications, stop telling Moors to fill this out so you can put your fake seal on it. You're not a state. You're not the competent authority of a state. You don't, you don't have three branches of government. You have no constitution. You don't have the competent authority to even be putting seals on so-called name changes. You please stop doing this. I'm extending fellowship to you. This is an educational platform of AMPAC study session. RBA Publications has an educational platform. We have to consolidate to understand what education should we be teaching more. And this is not it. This is sending more to jail. What else is sending more to jail? Let's talk about it. Look at this. This is the next document that Army Bay Publication has more filling out, and then after that, they end up in handcuffs. Here we go. A judicial notice and proclamation to all elected United States public republic officials and public servants of federal, state, city, and municipal governments, personnel, and corporate entities concerning the Constitution and all statutory and civil law codes of the land, etc. No, all men by these presents. Okay, pause right there. First of all, let's look at the top. Moorish, there's no such thing as Moorish Americans in the treaties. This is a non big year. This is a misnomer. This is a hybrid. It does not exist in treaties. It cannot be enforced. Nowhere on planet Earth. 
And look at this is the worst part right here. Look, judicial notice. Already, already made publications. Tell me the name of the judge that's sitting in a judicial chair on the bench, giving his judicial notice. What's the name of the judge that was sworn in, took their public inauguration oath to the state? Do you have their contact information? Can you please send that to me? Because I'm the competent authority of counsel court. I'd like to meet your judicial judge who's signing these judicial notices so I can let them know that they're violating international law because there's no such thing as more Americans in the treaty. I'd like to talk to your competent judge, please. But that's a rhetorical question because already made, already made publication don't have no judges. But this is a judicial notice that they're telling black people who become more Americans say, yeah, man, see, fill this out and send them a judicial notice. So now Kendrick Johnson, who turned into Kendrick Bay overnight with some frivolous paperwork, now Kendrick Bay, who used to be Kendrick Johnson yesterday, now sending a judicial notice like he's a judge. This is absolute incompetence. This don't make no sense. Judicial notice, really? Look, time out. Time out. Let's go back over here to the Constitution of the United States of America. Judicial powers, right? Judicial powers under Article 3, Section 2. Judicial powers is where? Under the authority of treaties. But under the authority of treaties, under the authority of treaties, you're supposed to be acting under your Constitution. This, as an example, this is AMPAC's Constitution, our seal, our preamble of Moors in Morocco. Then you come down to Article 3. Article 3, we have a real Article 3 for Moors, a real Article 3 for Moors, because our Article 3 is about the judicial branch that can sign off on any judicial notice. So listen, judicial notice from someone who was black yesterday, today they're Moorish American, and the Moorish American teachers tell them, fill out this judicial notice like you a judge, and tell that whole world you're Moorish American, but yet they're not telling that black person who was Kendrick Johnson, now they claim to be Kendrick Bay, that there's no such thing as Moorish Americans in the trees. As a matter of fact, there's no constitution called the Zodiac Constitution that's been ratified, deposited, and promulgated in accordance with international law. It don't exist. And as a matter of fact, when you put that AA222141 in your documents, that's a, a potential inmate number. You're on a conveyor belt going right to jail. Now listen to this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Look at this. That I, Suleiman Bey, am a noble of the all of Moroccan Empire, North America, and Propotia Persona, my own, pers my own proper self, being Moorish American, a descendant of the ancient Moabites, Moors, the birthright, freehold, primogenitor, and inheritance, being aboriginal and indigenous to the lands, Amexum, America's territorium of my ancient Moabite Moors foremothers and forefathers to wit. You know, you just simply could have just said, I'm Moroccan. Saved you a whole lot of typing, but look at this. <laughs> Turn around and say, you're a noble of Moroccan Empire, and you put in parentheses North America. So you're saying the Moroccan Empire is North America? No, America is in Morocco. You don't even need to add that. Take that off the document. Matter of fact, have your Article Three judge contact me. I'm the common authority of a court. Have your common authority of your court contact me so we can talk about this document. Okay? Look at this next part. The all Moroccan American continents are the land of the Moors, being North America, South America, Central America, including the adjoining islands. Pause. The all Moroccan American continents. We're not American continents. It's Morocco. Who confirmed it? The Sultan. Who else? The courts of Morocco say this land is Morocco. George Washington faked the city Mohammed Sultan Morocco for his dominions. Sultan Morocco allowed the 13 colonies to stay where? In Morocco. But then these Moorish American teachers keep adding this hybrid Moroccan-American uh, which is like saying Moorish American. You see? You see what they did? When you say Moroccan American, you're saying Moorish American because you can't stop saying it. It's like you got the hiccups. You can't stop. 
Moroccan American. No, take that out. You just simply Moroccan. This is too easy. Then it says, it's, it's the land of the Moors. Okay, being North America, wait a minute. You just said it's Morocco. You just said it's Morocco. Then you come over and say it says the land of the Moors being North America. This is confusing to new students. This has got to stop. Down here it says, being Moorish American, we're not more. This, this is supposed to be a judicial notice. You're going to say and tell me your judge is saying that Moors are Moorish Americans because your judge read the treaties and see that we are Moorish Americans. That's a lie. This is what you call literature. This is not legislative documents. These are not judicial documents. This is patently frivolous and arbitrary and capricious documents. We got to tell the truth. The truth sometimes is messy. But if we don't point out these problems, then we'll never ever come up with solutions. Now look at this. We have and possess the internationally recognized rights to determine our own status of the state. What state? You don't have no state. You're stateless of anything. You're still Dorothy because you're still adopted in the jurisdiction of the wizard. And you're causing black people to go from being in the pan of being black down to the fire of being more American. This right here is a consular court order that I wrote from the competent consular court of Article 3 of our Moroccan Constitution. Not the Article 3 of the United States of America's Constitution, but Article 3 of a Moroccan state who has a constitution. I'm the competent judge of consular court. Now I can write a competent consular court order to protect who? Moorish nationals in Morocco, not in America? What is the first thing the consular court should open up with? Keeping in mind, what does the title say? A provincial state government under the existing and pre-existing sovereignty of the Moroccan Empire, not the American Empire, right? For Lodi Moorish Prairie in Monte, Colorado, Council Court of the State, Capital S. I wrote this Council Court order concerning treaty rights. You start with treaties. This is where you start. You don't start with the Noah Webster's Dictionary. You start with treaty, treaty supreme law of the land. And who's supposed to enforce treaties? Okay. Who's supposed to enforce treaties? Who is supposed to enforce treaties? Okay. Okay. Who is supposed to enforce the treaties? Who is supposed to validate the state? Who is supposed to enforce consul court? Well, the answer can be found in the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1836 or 1787, doesn't matter, Article 20. If any of the citizens of the United States or any person under their protection shall have any dispute with each other, the consul court shall decide between the parties, and whenever the consul court shall require any aid or assistance from our Moroccan government to enforce his consul court decision, it shall be immediately granted to him by the Moroccan government. So, if the consul court's responsible for writing judicial notices, then why is it that Army Bay Publications has Moors running out here turning in judicial notices and no judge wrote it? No consul court wrote that. This is why Moors are going to jail. They're trying to enforce these rents and affidavits that are fraud. However, when the Moors, the black people, find out they're supposed to return to a Moroccan state, now the council court can get involved. The council court can write a competent council court order regarding treaty rights. I'm going to show you one last thing and we're going to wrap it up. This is France versus the United States of America. This is for Army Bay Publications and all the Moorish American teachers. You go down to page 202. In the PDF, I think it's 30. 202. Moorish American teachers go to page 202. 
in the judgment. And please read this to your new black people that's trying to so-called nationalize with your third party e-commerce website. Have your new students read this on page 202. It says, in the absence of any treaty provisions dealing with this matter, it has been contended that a right of assent can be based on custom usage or practice. It is unnecessary to repeat the reasons which have been given for rejecting custom usage and practice as a basis for extended constant jurisdiction and which are largely applicable to the right of assent. It is, however, listen up, Voice American teachers. It is, however, necessary to point out that the very large number of instances in which Moroccan laws are referred to the United States authorities can readily be explained as a convenient way of ensuring their incorporation in ministerial decrees binding upon the Council of Courts. And in that way, and in that way only, could these laws be made enforceable as against the United States nationals so long as the extended consular jurisdiction was being exercised? What does that mean? Okay. Now you got to go back and enforce through all these treaties. The competent consular court is supposed to use all these treaties all this well-settled principle of law and legislation. And the council court is responsible for going to study treaties to understand how to enforce Moroccan laws against anyone who considers themselves to be Americans. Now, how do we do that? Okay, now you come back over to the treaty. The treaty under Article 20 and 21 gives the council court the powers to help any subject of Morocco who's trying to return to Morocco can help that more to sign off on his nationality documentation. I, as the judge of my state, I sign off on everyone's documentation. I must validate the state and I must validate every national that comes in to validate that their name is on the registration of our state. But yet, our debate publications got moors and black people out here running around acting like they're judges, self-appointed judges. Th this has to stop. As I start to close out, we can point out problems, but we, we also have to point out solutions. What is the solution? Okay. Let me just read this real fast. Let's examine a legislative act that was ratified, deposited, and promulgated by the Moroccan states. The legislation is commonly known as the Act of the Sarah's of April 7, 1906, as follows. Treaty of Act of the Sarah's 1906, but not limited to articles, articles 96 and 123. Moorish means Moroccan. Moor means Moroccan. Morocco means Moroc, i.e. Morocco. Right? So, so we found that when we looked up the, up the Act of the of 1906, right? In the Act of the of 1906, we go Control F, we put in 96, Enter. On a split screen, I'm going to try to split the screen. Article 96, for the Moorish American teachers, please go back and teach your students this. Under 96, it says, Moorish means Moroccan. It's as simple as that. Moorish government is the what? Moroccan government. It's as simple as that. Moroccan means Moroccan. It's as simple as that. Morocco in French means Moroc. What else? Oh, here it is. Moors. Moors. Moors means what? Moroccans. Simple as that. So the Act of the of 1906, but not limited to Articles 96 and 123, Moorish means Moroccan. Moor means Moroccan. 
Morocco means Moroc, i.e. Morocco. If Moorish means Moroccan, then a Moorish American is saying that they are Moroccan American. There are no such people named Moroccan Americans or Moorish Americans in the treaties. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship is a contract between Moroccan Americans, Moroccans and Americans, I should say. You're either Moroccan or American, period. However, the Moors teachers have falsely and fraudulently created a hybrid misnomer commonly known as Moorish American. The term Moorish American is colorful, counterfeit, a crime against humanity, a corruption of our Moroccan bloodline, and an attempt to genocide against the indigenous Moors, whereas Moors are not Americans. Moors are in fact and true the Aboriginal Moroccans in the land of Morocco and anything contrary notwithstanding. Moorish American teachers are committing fraud and attempts of genocide against Moroccan Moors. It is important to note that the matriarchs of the legislative branch of Moroccan states throughout the empire of Morocco will someday enact legislative bills that prohibit indoctrination and fraudulent teaching. The Wazir Reyes of the executive branch of each Moroccan state will someday sign a bill into a ratified and promulgated legislative act. Once the act becomes promulgated law, then the Consul General of each Moroccan state will give notice to any more within their Moroccan state jurisdiction to cease and desist from prohibited false teaching because fraud and attempts of act of genocide are criminal acts and a crime against humanity. If the prohibited fraud and indoctrination teaching does not cease, then the Consul General will have no choice but to petition the Moroccan State Judicial Branch and its Chief Judge to bring criminal charges against those more subjects and their organizations for violating Moroccan laws in accordance with the Act of the Stairs, Article 102, which reads as follows. Every confiscation, fine, or penalty must be imposed on foreigners by consular jurisdiction and on Moorish subjects by Sharifian jurisdiction. That's Article 102 of the Act of Ceres. The Consul Court, the Consul General, the Speaker of the House and the Legislative Branch, the Sayyid Raha, and the Wazir will enact legislation. The Consul General will do an investigation. If that investigation finds out that the more subjects are still breaking Moroccan law, then after that, that more subject will be adjudicated. It's as simple as that. We're not going to keep arguing and debating over the question of nationality. It will be settled sooner or later. So therefore, ANPAC study session right now is trying to get ahead of this. I'm trying to notify Army Bay Publications and any other so-called Moorish American teachers that we have to stop teaching this indoctrination. We're not Moorish Americans. You need to drop the word American and just stick with Moorish National or Moroccan National, but the only way to do that, you gotta be like Dorothy and return back to Morocco and click your heels three times and come back to a Moroccan state government. So as I start to close out, we're still in the Charter of the United Nations, chapter six. It's about the Pacific Settlement Dispute, but the settlement dispute I'm trying to settle right now, the Declaration of Intervention, is the question about nationality in Morocco. So the question is, how can Moroccan states settle the dispute about nationality in Morocco? Well, here's the answers. It starts with legislation of the state, right? You gotta create Moroccan law. That's what legislation is, Moroccan law. Then it goes into education. We have to educate the people. We have to educate more subjects and more American teachers. We have to teach them about the education of our legislation. Because that's also about Moroccan laws, right? Education about our Moroccan law. If they don't stop, then it's going to be an investigation by the Consul General, right? Because there's alleged violations of our Moroccan law. Once the Consul General realizes that there are some violations, okay, Consul General can get into mediation to hope to settle the matter, to hope that that Moorish American stops, ceases, and desists 
If not, it's going to get into arbitration, and the consul general is going to bring that suit to consul court. If consul court finds that more subject guilty, then that's considered adjudication because it was a violation of our Moroccan law. And then the consul court has a right to do what? Issue fines, penalties, and confiscations because that was a violation of Moroccan law, which is under Article 102, which reads as follows of the Act of Ceres. Every confiscation, fine, or penalty must be imposed on foreigners by consular jurisdiction and on more subjects by Sharifian jurisdiction. I am with that. Islam. Islam.